This is a photo of a Robinson R44 tail rotor. And here's an animation of the components of this tail rotor. In today's video, I'll cover the details of how the Robinson tail rotor functions. We'll talk about the mechanical degrees of freedom and how these degrees of freedom respond to pilot inputs and aerodynamic forces. This will lead into a discussion of pitch flap coupling and different ways of implementing this coupling. There's a few reasons I decided to create this 3D model. One is that Tanner J bought me some coffee on buymeacoffee.com. Tanner's a flight instructor who teaches in R44s. And so far, most of my videos have been of larger helicopters, but Tanner helped me realize how this content can help those new to helicopter flying. So I decided to start this new project and animate the R44. As of today, I've modeled the tail rotor, the tail rotor drive shaft, and the control push rods and bell cranks. I'll complete the rest of the aircraft over the next few months. A second reason is that I'm also working on a 3D model of a tilt rotor, and so far I've posted two videos on that project. And tilt rotors, or at least the one that I chose to animate, use a rotor hub that has some similarities to the Robinson tail rotor. Specifically, they're both teetering rotors with pitch flap coupling. Robinson uses a two-bladed design, and my tilt rotor uses a three-bladed design, as does the XV-15, MV-22, and AW-609. So figuring out the kinematics on the simpler Robinson design will help me complete the animation of the tilt rotor swashplate and controls. I'll continue work on both projects and release videos as I make progress. The third reason I made this video is to answer a viewer question about the H60 tail rotor video I posted a few months ago. Specifically, Chris C. asked, how does the elastomeric hinge equate to the delta-3 hinge? I'm having a hard time seeing how that allows or guides movement in the desired degree of freedom. And it's this question that motivated me to model not just one R44 tail rotor, but three separate tail rotors with different mechanical implementations of rotor flapping and pitch flap coupling. An explanation of these three different mechanical implementations will help with overall understanding of how tail rotors work. Chris's question also made me realize that my explanation in the H60 video wasn't clear. And not only wasn't it clear, but I also referenced an incorrect drawing in that video. This is the one I referenced, and I should have referenced this one instead, the one with offset pitch control rods. I'm trying to use today's video to improve that explanation, and I'll do this by showing and animating different control concepts for implementing pitch flap coupling. Before getting into these different designs, let's talk about pitch flap coupling. This is going to be a key thing in understanding the motions of the tail rotors. A tail rotor has three mechanical degrees of freedom. These are flapping, blade pitch change, and rotation. And pitch flap coupling is the kinematic linkage between the blade pitch degree of freedom and the flapping degree of freedom. In other words, when the blade flaps, there's a coupled pitch response of the blade. In the two rotor systems on the screen, the one on the left is designed with pitch flap coupling, while the one on the right shows a design without pitch flap coupling. In this looping animation, both rotors are flapping. There is no pitch control input to either of them. Despite the absence of the pitch control input, if you look carefully, you should be able to see the pitch of the blades changing on the left rotor but the pitch of the blades remains constant on the right rotor. If it's hard to see that in the animation, here's another view that shows the same two rotors with this yellow line clamped to the rotor tips. Both of the rotors are flapping, but it's only the rotor on the left where this flapping couples into a blade pitch response. I covered the aerodynamic reasons why pitch flap coupling is needed in my Blackhawk tail rotor video. Here's a review. Angle of attack is the angle between the cord line of the blade and the total velocity vector of the air approaching the blade. In helicopters, the blade's total velocity vector consists of four different vector components of airflow. These are a component due to blade rotation, a component due to forward flight speed, 
a component due to induced airflow through the blade, and a component due to flapping. The forward flight speed component becomes larger or smaller as the blade rotates, larger on the advancing blade and smaller on the retreating blade. This introduces a forward flight dissymmetry of lift where the advancing blade has a tendency to produce more lift than the retreating blade. And in response to this, the blades flap and flapping alters this component normal to the rotor disc. The net effect of the change to the horizontal and normal components of the total velocity vector is to equalize lift distribution on the advancing and retreating sides of the disc. So flapping is good. It prevents an unequal lift distribution caused by rotating wings moving in an edgewise airflow, but too much flapping can cause problems. Because the lower blade is the advancing blade on the Robinson, the tail rotor blade striking the upper vertical fin where flapping clearance is the lowest is a key problem engineers need to avoid. So flapping can reduce the blade angle of attack, and this is what we want. But there's another way to reduce that angle of attack, and that's by reducing the pitch attitude of the blade itself. This is what pitch flap coupling does. It augments the angle of attack reduction provided by flapping by coupling a reduction in pitch to any increase in flapping. This coupling response is often described as an aerodynamic spring. The more the blades flap, the stronger the restoring force due to the pitch change becomes. In tilt rotors, pitch flap coupling increases rotor stability and fast wingborne flight. And interestingly, this coupling is opposite the coupling of helicopter tail rotors. Tail rotor blades reduce pitch in response to increased flapping, while in tilt rotors, blade pitch increases in response to increased flapping. If you're interested in reading more about how this improves high speed stability in tilt rotors, there's a couple of references in the video description. To help with the visualization and understanding of these mechanical motions of tail rotors, I modeled three separate designs. The design on the left is the actual Robinson design. This has a skewed flapping axis to achieve pitch flap coupling. In the middle is a design where the flapping axis is perpendicular to the blades. The design has no pitch flap coupling and no delta 3 angle. On the right is a repeat of the center design, except that the blade pitch control rods are moved off of the flapping axis. This new position results in pitch flap coupling. The right side of the screen is also the answer to Chris C's question about how rotors with elastic meric bearings can achieve pitch flap coupling, and I'll cover that later in this video. That was just a quick overview of these three different designs. Let's cover each of them in some more detail. I'll start with the actual Robinson design with the skewed flapping hinge. The drive system is common to all three designs. I'll show this once and then I won't repeat it for the next two. Drive power comes from the output of the clutch assembly and it's passed to the tail rotor via the tail rotor drive shaft and a 90 degree spiral bevel gearbox. The bevel gears have 31 teeth and 27 teeth, and this results in a 1.15 to 1 gear change from the clutch output. The input pinion has more teeth than the output gear, so this is an RPM increase. In the R44, with the main rotor turning at 102% RPM, the clutch output speed is 2,114 RPM, and the tail rotor turns at 2,427 RPM. There's more to the tail rotor control system than what I have on the screen. This is a work in progress. For today, I'm showing a push-pull tube, a bell crank, the pitch control assembly, the pitch control rods, and the pitch change horns on the blades. When the pilot actuates the tail rotor pedals, the long push rod moves. This in turn actuates the tail rotor bell crank. The bell crank's pivot point is structurally connected to the tail rotor gearbox, and here's a photo showing that connection. Motion of the bell crank is transmitted to the non-rotating portion of the pitch control assembly, which is then passed to the rotating portion. This translating motion of the pitch control assembly is then sent to the tail rotor blades via pitch control rods and pitch horns on the blades. And here I'm actuating the pedals so you can see how this motion is passed to control the pitch of the blades. 
The pitch control assembly is an analog to the swash plate found on main rotors, but it doesn't tilt, so it's not called a swash plate. I've now started the rotation of the tail rotor and I'm actuating the pedals. This is to demonstrate the function of the pitch control assembly as it passes the control input from the non-rotating controls and into the rotating controls in order to change the pitch of the blades. You may have seen drive scissors on helicopter main rotors. Their purpose is to mechanically link the rotation of the swash plate to the rotors. Robinson doesn't use a drive scissors on the tail rotor pitch control assembly because these flats on the rotor shaft lock the rotating portion of the pitch control assembly to the shaft's rotation while still allowing the sliding motion. I'm now showing the flapping degree of freedom. Flapping only happens aerodynamically when the rotors are turning, but I'm showing this motion with the rotor stopped to illustrate how it's mechanized. Currently the rotor is flapping plus and minus 10 degrees on either side of neutral. The flapping axis in the Robinson design is hinged about a skewed axis. It's skewed when compared to the longitudinal axis of the blades. In this view, the green line is the flapping axis and the blue line is the blade's longitudinal axis. The angle between these two lines is the delta 3 angle. Because of this skewed flapping angle, the flapping motion causes a pitch response even though the blades don't pitch about their individual pitch axis. Instead, the entire hub tilts and this is seen by the blades as a change in pitch. It may be helpful to compare the flapping and pitch motions separately. Looking at the hub from this perspective, I'm actuating pitch control of the blades. And now here is the same rotor on the right, but I'm actuating flapping without any pitch control. And by putting these side by side, the point I'm showing is that there are two types of pitch change. One is controlled by the pilot via the control system, and the other is the result of pitch flap coupling. Let's look at it from a different perspective. Looking top down, I'll show this yellow vector again. This is clamped to the blade tip. But on the left, you see pitch control without any flapping motion. And on the right, you see the flapping motion without any pitch control. And the key point to understand here is that the pitch of the blades changes in both scenarios. On the left, the pitch change is due to a control input from the pilot. And on the right, pitch change is due to a coupled response caused by flapping. Let's now take a look at tail rotor flapping in forward flight. This is a view from forward looking aft. The lower blade is the advancing blade, so it sees a higher airspeed than the upper retreating blade. Because higher airspeed creates more lift, it flaps away from the tail boom. I slowed down the animation, and, and it's a very subtle difference. It may be difficult to see, but you may be able to notice how the pitch on the lower advancing blade decreases and starts increasing again on the upward part of the rotation. Blade pitch is lowest at the bottom of the arc, and this reduces the lift produced by the advancing blade. This results in an equalized lift distribution between advancing and retreating blades. If you recall my Blackhawk video, I said that forward flight dissymmetry of lift is really a misnomer. In rotary wings, there would be a dissymmetry of lift if engineers didn't do anything about it. What they do is they design blades with a flapping hinge and pitch flap coupling, and these two things result in a symmetric distribution of lift on both the advancing and the retreating side of the disc. Let's shift to the next design. I'll start by showing it side by side to the first design so the comparison is easier. We just talked about the skewed flapping axis design on the left. In the design on the right, the flapping axis is perpendicular to the blade's longitudinal axis and the pitch control rods are on that flapping axis. This design does not have pitch flap coupling. For demonstration, with this side-by-side -side comparison of these two different rotors, I'm now actuating pitch control of the blades. And now I'm moving the flapping degree of freedom without any pitch control. And for another comparison, I'll switch again to this top-down view with the yellow vector that's attached to the rotor tip. And here is pitch control and now this is flapping without any pitch control. 
And the key point is that flapping in the skewed flapping axis design, the one on the left, couples into a pitch response at the tail rotor blade. The design on the left has pitch flap coupling, where the design on the right does not. You can see this because the yellow vector on the right does not change its angle as the blade flaps. So my motivation for showing this hub without any pitch flap coupling is because there's another way to mechanize this type of coupling, a way that uses this rotor hub without a skewed flapping angle. To make this non-skewed axis hub into a pitch flap coupling hub, all we have to do is move the pitch control horns so they are not in line with the flapping axis. The amount they are moved off of the flapping axis is the delta three angle. And I'll apologize here because this delta three angle is different from the R44 skewed axis design. It would have been better to do a equal comparison with 45 degrees of delta three on both, but I didn't do that. Moving the pitch control horns make them want to move up and down as they flap because they're off of the flapping axis, but they can't move up and down because they're constrained by the pitch control rods. To show this, I'll remove these bolts from the upper pitch control rods. Now when I move the hub on its flapping axis, you can see the pitch horns are displaced away from the upper pitch control rod connection. But in an airworthy helicopter, these bolts aren't disconnected, so the pitch control rods become a constraint. As the hub flaps away from neutral, this constraint forces the blades to move on their pitch axis in response to flapping. And it's probably good to point out now that this second way to mechanize pitch flap coupling isn't appropriate for an aircraft like the R44. The R44 uses unboosted reversible tail rotor controls. And because of this, the forces passed into the pitch control rods would feed back into the control system. In fact, it's just as likely this mechanization would move the tail rotor pedals as it would move the tail rotor blades on their pitch axis. On aircraft with hydraulically boosted controls, this wouldn't be an issue because control forces can't go the other direction through a hydraulic actuator. Getting back to Chris's question on my Blackhawk tail rotor video, that question was, how does the elastomeric hinge equate to a Delta III hinge? I'll go back to my animation of the Blackhawk tail rotor and you can see the offset pitch control rods. With the flex beams, it may be difficult to know where the virtual flapping hinge is located, but as long as it's outboard of the pitch control rods, flapping motion will couple into a delta-3 pitching motion. This pitch control rod offset is the means by which the Blackhawk tail rotor implements pitch flap coupling. And notice I said the flapping axis has to be outboard of the pitch control rods for the Blackhawk, but it's clearly inboard of the control rods for the Robinson. This is because the pitch horns are on the blade trailing edge for the Blackhawk and they're on the leading edge for the Robinson. The effect is the same. Blade flapping away from neutral couples into a blade nose down pitch. My rationale for presenting three different notional designs for a helicopter tail rotor in this video was to help understand these different ways of implementing pitch flap coupling. I thought this was a better way to understand not just the Robinson design, but also how these fundamental concepts are implemented in other aircraft. Here's a recap of what we covered on this video. Pitch flap coupling is mechanical coupling in rotor systems where the flapping motion of the blades causes a pitch motion. Delta three refers to the angle between the rotor's flapping axis and its pitch axis. The delta three angle has to be something other than 90 degrees in order to create pitch flap coupling. Helicopter tail rotors often use pitch flap coupling as a means to prevent forward flight the symmetry of lift. And finally, there's at least two ways to implement pitch flap coupling in a rotor system. One method uses the skewed axis flapping hinge and the other uses pitch control rods that are offset from the blades flapping axis. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting as a way to help grow this channel. Thanks for spending some time with me today to learn more about these concepts that make rotary wing flight possible. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.